welcome back. So in this part of the presentation, uh, we are going to focus on the monitor tool uh, called uh, Darsan, and we are going to have also a hands-on uh, tutorial. So let's start. Uh, we discussed in the previous part uh, of the presentation that uh, the way we use the storage system impacts greatly the performance. Uh, as an application is running, we would like to be able to see how the storage system is being used. Uh, the typical I.O. Uh, path, uh, as shown in uh, the right uh, hand side, consists of uh, several layers. So in the top layer, we have the application. Then the applications might use I.O. libraries like uh, HDF5 on NetCDF. And uh, then we have the file system. And beneath at the lower level, we have the storage devices that they will actually store uh, the data. So tracing and uh, observing uh, the I.O. as it goes through all these layers, uh, it is something that we can do. Uh, however, we are always uh, uh, limited on the possibilities uh, we have. Uh, for an application developer, the most important uh, aspect is to trace the I.O. Uh, generated by the application itself and the I.O. as uh, the I.O. libraries are generated. Tools to do such um, uh, monitorings are uh, Darsan or uh, Scalar Trace, there are uh, other also. Uh, for us, we will force, uh, focus on Darsan. Then uh, we can also trace uh, the file system uh, activity, uh, but uh, uh, for this, we will have to use uh, specific uh, tools that are designed for file systems. And uh, then finally, we can also trace the IO activities that uh, the storage devices see themselves. So uh, there are uh, tools to do that, for example, the Linux uh, block tracing uh, uh, tool. Uh, for us, uh, the reason we want to trace the IO generated for the application is, of course, to improve the performance of it. Uh, the application developers uh, can control how the application will generate I.O. And uh, also the I.O. libraries uh, developers can also control how the I.O. libraries will uh, generate uh, I.O. They cannot uh, control how the file system will generate uh, the I.O. and uh, uh, issue it to the storage devices. However, there is um, a way that uh, we can uh, advise the file system and pass uh, some hints on the way that uh, we are going to use it. Uh, this is called the F advice uh, system call and uh, uh, we can use it, but uh, it's not guaranteed uh, that uh, this will uh, change uh, uh, the uh, way the file system is uh, uh, receiving and uh, processing the IO requests. Um, Apart from the application developers, um, more uh, tuning to the storage system can be done by the file system developers and the system administrators. But uh, this is something that, uh, uh, as application developers, you will not be able to control it. So and now let's uh, start and go in more details uh, uh, on uh, Darsan. So Darsan. The name means uh, sight or vision in uh, Sanskrit. And uh, what is it? It is a lightweight, scalable I.O. characterization tool that uh, transparently captures application I.O. access pattern information. Uh, Darsan is uh, an open source uh, library and uh, runtime, and it is being developed and maintained by Aragon National Laboratory. So let's go a bit in more details and see the key features of Darsan. Darsan is able to capture several I.O. interfaces. Sai, in uh, the first part of the presentation, mentioned uh, um, what are the differences and, uh, of these uh, I.O. interfaces. So Darsan can capture POSIX I.O., MPI I.O., and there is also some limited support for HDF5 and 
net type etcdf. Uh, in order to enable uh, Darshan to capture the I.O., uh, we will have to instrument uh, the application with uh, the Darshan library. This can be done either uh, static at compile time of the application or at runtime while the application is being uh, running, we can uh, preload the Darshan library. Darshan is compatible with um, popular uh, compilers and most of the MPI implementation. Uh, we can use Darshan and get uh, statistics uh, without having to be uh, bound to a specific file system. We can use it with local file system like X4, or we can use it with parallel file system, Lustre, GPFS, and uh, whatever other file system we would like. Uh, Darshan is uh, lightweighted, as I mentioned before. So this means that it does not really uh, impact application performance in a measurable way. You can run your application as usual and uh, have it uh, been uh, traced uh, uh, the I.O. by Darshan and the application will not perform uh, different. So you can have it on in production runs that will give you uh, more details in the insights on how the application performs I.O. Another uh, interesting feature of Darsan is that it does not require any application code modification and uh, not even modification of your uh, make files. Uh, Darsan consists of two main components. The first one is the Darsan runtime. The Darsan runtime is the library that it is used to capture I.O. statistics while the application it is running. So for this uh, um, component, you will have to install it on the HPC system uh, that you will run your uh, um, MPI jobs to uh, uh, capture the I.O. tracing. And uh, the installation steps might vary depending on the platform. Uh, later, we will have the installations for a typical Linux uh, system. Then you will see that it is not uh, that complicated. However, there are some systems that uh, require special uh, need. And for that, you can look in the Darshan manual. Uh, then the other component, it is the Darshan util that uh, consists of uh, some tools that will enable you to analyze the log files that uh, the Darshan runtime um, generates. The Darshan util uh, is not mandatory to be installed in an HPC system. You can install it in a, a workstation and uh, just transfer the log files in your uh, local uh, workstation and use Darshan util to analyze them. And uh, the installation of this is not uh, really depending on the platform. It's general and it can be, it's the same for almost any Utenix like uh, platform. Uh, in this slide, uh, and, uh, in the next ones, we will see what is the installation process of the Darshan runtime and the Darshan util. Later, uh, during the demo, we will uh, execute these commands uh, uh, but uh, for the moment, let's go forward and see what uh, each of these commands will, uh, will do. So uh, an important uh, aspect is that uh, Darshan can be installed system-wide and can be available to all users. But also you, as a single user, you can install it in your home directory. And there is no need to have uh, root access for that. The functionality that Darshan will offer is uh, exactly the same as it would have been in a system-wide installation. That's the first step that uh, you will have to do in order to uh, install Darsan is, of course, to download uh, the source code. You can find the source code in the link above. The source code comes uh, in a tar and a zip file. To uh, untar and unzip, you just use tar uh, a command, and uh, then you will have to 
compile the Darsan runtime and the Darsan utils, the two different components that we described uh, above. So you will have to enter the Darsan uh, main directory and then under the Darsan runtime, you will have to configure uh, and then execute the make command. So here in the configure, I have listed some of the parameters. Uh, Darsan will work for MPI jobs and to use Darsan, you have to use an MPI compiler, both for Darsan and for the application that you would like to uh, trace. So in the configure, we pass CC equals MPI CC to um, make sure that we use the MPI compiler, then we can use the prefix parameter where we can specify an installation directory in case that we don't want to use the default system uh, installation directories and we want to install it in our own local directories. I, after that, we can use, and I would recommend to use uh, the with log path by n uh, parameter that uh, this one specifies an environment variable that can be used to uh, denote in which directory we will store the Darsan uh, log file that it is being generated when the application is being uh, run and uh, traced by Darsan. Uh, these are the most important uh, aspects. Then for Darsan utility, we have to enter the subdirectory of uh, the Darsan package, the Darsan utility, and we just have to configure it. And uh, we can also pass a prefix where we can denote our uh, preferred installation uh, directory. So now how we can use uh, Darsan? So the easiest way to use it is uh, to use it as a dynamic um, uh, with dynamic executables. As I mentioned before, we can use it either static or dynamic. For this um, demo, we will focus on how to use it in a dynamic uh, executable. And to determine if an executable is dynamic or not, you can use the LDT command and then the executable, and it should uh, output something like that where it will denote that the MPI is linked in uh, one uh, dynamic library. Uh, then what we have to do is we have to uh, export and set the Darsan log path environment variable. This is the uh, variable that we set up during the config phase of the Darsan runtime. And finally, what we have to do is that uh, we have to preload the Darshan library before our MBI um, run job. So here in this command, you can see it as an example that we preload uh, the library of uh, Darshan and then we have the typical uh, MPI job. So once the application is being running, Darshan will collect uh, IO traces and statistics, but it will only generate and write those in dot file when the MPI finalized call is being executed by an application. So if our application is not executing the MPI finalized, then Darshan will not generate a log file. Uh, after you should uh, use the Darsan uh, utilities to analyze these log files. Further documentation on the runtime, you can find it in uh, this link. And now let's talk a bit about uh, the log file analysis uh, tools that uh, Darsan comes with. So there are several of them. And uh, the first one that uh, we are going to also uh, to use in our demo is the Darsan job summary tool. Uh, this tool uh, gets as an input parameter the log file that Darsan runtime generated and it creates a PDF with graphs that are uh, useful for initial analysis. Uh, it gives you uh, uh, some uh, nice statistics. We are going to see an example later. Uh, the uh, important thing is that in order to use this tool, you will have to install some extra packages uh, you will need Perl, PDF, LaTeX, um, GNUplot, uh, EP, 
as to PDF. Then another tool that it is similar to the above, but uh, what it does it, uh, it will create a separate PDF file for each file to open is the Darson summary per file. Um, you can try that on, on your own. We will not try it in this demo. And finally, another tool is the Darson parser that uh, dumps all the information into a ASCII text format that would be human readable. So it takes the log file that you cannot really read it. And uh, then it will generate a nice um, text uh, format output that you will be able to read and interpret. Further documentation you can find in this link uh, below. So uh, here in this figure, you see an example uh, output of uh, Dartsan job uh, summary. Uh, this is a PDF. We can see what is the uh, job ID, uh, the user ID, the number of processes, the runtime that uh, this uh, command uh, took. And uh, we can also see I.O. performance estimates for the POSIX layer and for the STID I.O. layer. Uh, and uh, then there are some um, nice graphs where we see the percentage of uh, uh, the runtime that I.O. took place. So uh, we see here a small red that it is the read phase. Then there is no write in this uh, scenario. That's why we don't see anything. Then for the blue, we see the metadata, and this is regarding the I.O. and all the other uh, purple pink color is uh, compute time, so it's not I.O. Uh, uh, cost. Then we see the I.O. operation counts, how many I.O. operations we did with uh, POSIX and STDIO. In this case, we did not have any MPI. And in the other graph, we see the POSIX uh, access uh, sizes. So here is how many uh, times they were uh, called and which is the access size uh, for each call. Uh, in this slide, we see uh, the Darsan parser, uh, job parser example. Here is more or less uh, in a human readable text format, the output of the log file that Darsan generated. There are several modules that uh, Darsan um, can uh, export and they are depending on the uh, interface that you use to generate IO. So in this example, we have the module uh, for POSIX and uh, you can see it here under module, then we have the rank, which process performed this I.O., then we have the record ID. So this is um, uh, a number that uh, specifies which process did uh, this I.O. and it is unique. Then we have the counter and the counter is um, which was the call that we uh, trace. For example, here the counter is POSIX opens, we have the value that was uh, how many times this POSIX opens uh, got called, in which file, and then we have the mount point, in which uh, mount point this command, uh, th this file uh, was part, and we have also the file system type. In this case, we have NFS4. Uh, uh, as I said uh, before, Darsan is a uh, lightweight and uh, it uh, gives you some statistics of uh, the I.O. But uh, the default Darsan mode does not capture every single call. It gives you just some statistics. Darsan was uh, enhanced with uh, Darsan Extended Tracing Module that uh, will give you report for every intercepted call. Uh, this is not enabled by default, and uh, to enable that, you have to export an environment variable that it is called DXT, enable IO trace. And uh, this one will give you IO traces that will appear as a time series, uh, each and every read or write call that the application uh, performed. Uh, to get the 
log, uh, log analysis for these uh, um, traces, you will have to use a special uh, tool that it is called Darsan DXD parser, and uh, this one will provide you um, uh, in a human readable form all the uh, calls that uh, the application did. Uh, Darshan D, uh, DXT is also uh, lightweight. It does not really impact application performance. Uh, maybe uh, a slight, uh, a slight a bit. And uh, what you can do, and it is also nice, is that you can define the granularity level of the uh, tracing that you would like to have. Uh, there is an environment variable that you can use to specify the file that will contain the configuration of the granularity that you would like to have for the tracing. And uh, there are uh, three major um, granularity parameters that you can uh, tweak. First of all is the file triggers, where you can specify which files you would like to have the DXT module tracing. Then there is the rank triggers where you can uh, specify which uh, ranks you would like the DXT module to be tracing. And uh, also there is the dynamic uh, triggers where uh, traces file are based on uh, runtime IO analysis characteristics. Uh, in this slide, we see an output of the Darsan DXT uh, parser. Uh, we have, um, again, several modules. In this module, we have uh, POSIX. Again, the, the rank we have here, a uh, read or write, where we'll specify if uh, the command was a read or a write. The segment, the offset uh, that this command was executed. Um, the length, uh, the number of bytes that this command uh, had to carry out, and then we have the start and the end time of uh, uh, this call. There are more Dunshar tools that uh, someone can use to analyze the log files, like Darson Convert that converts an existing log file to a newest uh, log format. There is the Darson Diff that provides a diff between two Darson log files that uh, it is comparing both for uh, job level metadata and module data records between files. Then there is the Darson analyzer that walks an entire uh, directory tree of Darson log files and produces a summary of the types of access methods to be used in these log files. So something that I had not mentioned before is that you can uh, configure uh, Darson to generate uh, and store log files in a tree manner. This is uh, something uh, that uh, it's the default uh, uh, method of uh, how Darson uh, stores the log files. However, uh, for our demo, we will use the environment variable, so we will make sure and it would be easier to locate the uh, uh, Darson generated uh, log file. And then there is the DXD analyzer that uh, will give you uh, plots uh, on the uh, traces that uh, it did. So it's uh, more or less similar to what the Darsan job summary does for the log uh, file. Uh, the hands are on tutorial. You will need the virtual machine. You can click in this link. This is the virtual machine that uh, EasyWay uh, Summer School has uh, set up. And then we have collected uh, four sample uh, applications that you can use to monitor um, Darsan, and this is uh, what we will do. So I will click in this link and uh, 